Okay, over Sweden. Uh, very nice to be in your house. Thank nice you for the thanks for the invitation, and uh, I'm quite <coughs> uh, impressed by your fabulous work over the years. And I even didn't know that you have even doctor's degree uh, in a, such an advanced um, techniques. And uh, please, uh, shortly, tell us about your uh, academic work. Well, it started at si age six. Oh, yeah. And I said to my mother, I want to be an aircraft engineer. And from that day, she said, then you have to get good grades at school. And I was trapped into being a good student. And she put me to school from six years of age. And I was... Directly focused on the yes. task. Wow. And... Um, so by uh, the age 23, I became a Master of Science in Aeronautics mm -hmm. at the Royal Institute of Technology in Stockholm. Okay. At early age... Um, but with... Uh, so that nothing beside. No experience, you mean, yeah? No experience, no um, spirituality, no philosoph uh, uh, emotional, totally intellectual. And that, I didn't understand that it was hard. until my spiritual awakening in 1967. At the age of 30, I realized that there was something beyond reading for a degree. Then I started to read everything, to actively become a philosopher. So reading the Bible, for instance, and making a summary, Every book I read should be one page summary. And it took me some years to make a one page summary of the Bible. Realizing that the only part was the Genesis chapter in the beginning and John's revelation in the end. Nothing in between but those things I have brought together. Mm -hmm. And uh, realizing that um, the Bible lacked something that I didn't understand until seeing the Muslims and the um, world in former Spain, convivancia. In um, it was a th some hundred years of coexisting between the Jews, Muslims, and Christians until the Catholic Church, with the Ferdinand and Isabella, decided to get rid of the Muslims, put them b uh, south of the Mediterranean and taking help from the Jews to do that. Mm. And after expelling the Muslims, and the Moors, as it were, they expelled the Jews. And they dis were dispersed uh, among uh, the Nordic countries. So, and that's where the new um, world order ideas came up. Mm -hmm. During the last 300 years we have a financial elite controlling the world under the term new world order where the f 13 financial f families have taken the rate, right to 
lend money with interest. That very thing that Jehovah explicitly forbade. It's not allowed to take interest when you help one of my the poor in my tribe. So realizing that is the key problem, taking interest, because that's all the thing that is now, a dirty greed to, with interest, interest rate controlling the world economy. So I said, what is the next history and the next future? It is a peaceful new world order. So I wrote a letter to David Rockefeller. Did you? And after four years and 30 letters. Oh, tedious work. Yes, he recognized the stamina I had. and um, decided when making his a draft of his will to include, include World Peace Foundation as a beneficiary to some percentage of his fortune. But uh, I think it is unethical to advance the time for that. So I have to wait patiently. Okay. That's quite a trick. You could even support directly, huh? But that's my story. Yeah, that's very interesting. That's very I'm interesting. sitting here waiting. Yeah. <laughs> that's an interesting story indeed. So these are your marvelous works, Philosoph philosophy mm. you mentioned. Yes. This is the subject here, I guess, yeah? I am philosophizing. This is one of your latest works, yeah? And they are no, no, a, when I'm... a bit linked to this as well, as I understand, yeah? This is uh, approved. This is just the draft. Uh, this is your thesis. approved doctor's dissertation yes. from uh, Lin Chirping's. And when I uh, um, management and economics yes. faculty uh, now finding a publisher uh, Vulcan um, Media dot com for this dot Swedish uh, book about uh, profitable uh, ki uh, municipal kidnapping. Mm. Uh, now I realize I can have this book printed uh, for um, 30,000 kroner. Yeah. Or and 10, what, what uh, is this book about? Can you briefly give us an idea? Well, it is the combination of psychology and cybernetics. Psychology, the soul as a feedback mechanism, according to Norbert Wiener and his system idea. Um, this I, is about creating a system? Any system, yes. Be it a religious system, an aircraft system, uh, or performing a... Uh, um, a duty in time and usually in creative work you start with an idea of sort then you go to your experience of uh, what you know of uh, procedures, uh, procedures and uh, hardware and software in the world 
Yeah. And see if you can use some of that in a new application. Up. <laughs> yeah. Is the word now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You have these uh, definitions of truth and value systems, well-being and will. Just that. Synthesis. And time is your very specific That's the uh, very term. thing. Then I realized that, in my view, uh, the human being is belonging to three dimensions. One is the physical dimension, in itself three dimension there. But um, the body is physical. Then you have a spiritual world of pure ideas. As a human being, over the years, you can be part of both these extremes. And linking them together in time is the purpose of the soul. Linking which together? The idea. So if I have an idea of a peaceful new world order, how do I get there from this mess? From idea to reality. You know? Yes. The, that is the task of the soul. You... The, exactly. And that is what um, Socrates, Plato and Aristotle expressed in three uh, because Socrates, he's acted his will to um, scrutinize the politician. He started the debate with them using the words of the uh, men in power. Yeah. And uh, made them angry because he... he um, he saw make them come into contradiction yeah. and express them in their own terms. And nobody uh, likes being exposed to the incapacity of oneself. Actually, but it is very good and also. When, if, when, you are, if you do that in a loving environment, it's good to be exposed, you know? If, if you're not punished, uh, sort of, uh, rudely. And this is, uh, if I stay with the uh, three philosophers first, uh, because uh, Plato was a poet and philosopher, and he was sort of writing down the dialogues that Socrates was making with the um, potential, the politicians of the time. Yeah. When Plato has got it in written form, Aristotle had something where he could use his uh, logic to find out what was the qualities of the language. But um, Socrates, he lived his truth. Plato wrote it down as a dialogue. Aristotle sat back and analyzed it and saw a logic in the language. Yeah. Uh, no one could act without it either, but it's interesting to know that uh, Socrates was dead before Aristotle was born. So the link between these three, and that's why I'm saying it's the willpower of Socrates, the feel, uh, the artistic, poetic feel of um, Plato that made Aristotle's conclusions, analytical conclusions or logical conclusions of what was uh, um, uh, the basis of politics and um
This is very important. You have this dictionary here too, dictionary for philosophizing. Mm -hmm. That's yes. the base of everything. Yes. If people don't understand uh, the word, the meaning of the word, they yes. can't communicate. And uh, here in my book, Enhet, I have this model of Aristotle. He said, there is no single right form of politics, but it's a sort of... Uh, um, cycle between different forms mm. and all these forms this is in this book yeah mm. theocracy aristocracy oligarchy democracy anarchy tyranny first um, no, kingdom theocracy and you have them all and he realized it by studying 158 yeah but um, now we have to pick up the pieces that left off of their uh, fabulous uh, discoveries and uh, unfortunately little of it is, is being used in praxis. That's exactly because I have been preparing them and you can find it all uh, on the website. This one, yeah? Yes. Great. Uh, Lovely. Uh, So this is very interesting. Outer loop. Yeah. <laughs> this yes. is also about time, yeah? Yes. And this is an orbit Venus time that you, uh, you have to have feedback at different time levels. Hmm. So for instance, if, and I'm uh, illustrating that with a uh, uh, if you are driving your car and keeping the lane and wanting to shift to a second lane, uh, the complete maneuver takes about 10 seconds. And, uh, but involved there you have, uh, uh, you can uh, clinch your hand in a tenth of a second. You can make a move with a steering wheel and that takes about one second. And if you combine uh, the oh, you were in ten seconds, then you can have your hit completely vehicle change in direction and shift to another lane and come to the new one. Hmm. So with a three layer feedback system you can control your vehicle and then I say if you should be in control of a country then perhaps you should have um, um, one year goal ten year goal and hundred year goals that are in harmony absolutely. with each other, with each other. Absolutely. long term and, and short term that's what I expressed and David Rockefeller was impressed about. Mm. And that's the, uh, why he found out that he has not got any type of those, uh, any anything like my letters. And so I gave him something of how she, he should come... Harmonize the systems. Uh, come away from petroleum to uh, uh, clean energy systems. Mm -hmm. So I made a scenario called a policy scenario on clean energy system for a peaceful new world order. So I wrote half of that essay, uh, the first half, for the D David Rockefeller and the rest of it, peaceful new world order, to the next generation. Mm -hmm. But um, 
How is he doing? Has, uh, doesn't seem to be so much peace in the world. Well, those things are ready to be published. Mm. I have the, uh, done the philosophizing work for it. Mm. Yeah, but... And... Um, still we need loving people to manage the theoretical assumptions yes. into life. Yes, that's right. And, uh, and that is uh, the uh, we are lacking that. Yeah, so that we but need some that, kind of. That's exactly what this spiritual awakening is all about. That is going on in the world, and it is of a new type now, because uh, in previous generation you had a sort of a philosopher, or you had a prophet um, expressing a new idea. Moses did one, Abraham did one, uh, Jesus did one and Muhammad made a third one. Uh, long term, all these came after the Atlantis tsunami 13,500 years ago, when a race living here for since 30,000 years ago, when Jehovah first came here and made a sort of draft civilization, and then found out, no, they have not the right composition. I have to end that with a tsunami. Uh, <laughs> Kluden. Big uh, floods, yeah. The big flood. Big flooding. Yeah. And uh, then came a new era, giving a sort of ethical education through. Abraham, Moses, Jesus, um, Muhammad. That's very Until interesting. Until now, new age is coming. In it, new age, new human being, new politics. And this work of yours is very interesting. If we tell the English speaking. Um, yes listeners once again so this is the scenarios on expert ge generated scenarios for long-range infrastructure planning that subtitle was written by the professors because they d didn't exist they, they don't know about the world of ideas but this was but, the technical they, they wanted yes. to have. But this is also interesting about transportation and energy yeah. systems. But they, uh, they think about their own experts that are trained through the academic system. That's the source of future. It's those that are more academic than the others. Yeah. But what is this model? Could you please uh, tell briefly again? In English, it is this. Yeah, so this is the synthesis rest is sort and analysis. Of, so get it through the system. Past time and future time. And where is the beginning of this spiral? Is it inside or outside? No, I can't explain it. It on to uh, the unmention paper because I was not allowed to speak about the spiritual sign. Take away that model because I saw the difference between uh, uh, Jung and uh, um, Freud. Mm. So uh, Jung understand the spiritual side, but Freud saw sexuality as a physical side. Yeah. And they don't understand each other. Though they complete each other, don't they? <laughs> yes. And I'm, as a philosopher, accept, aha, uh -huh, that's the 
uh, reasonable way of uh, explaining it. And uh, um, uh, Jung's speak about uh, serendipity, about uh, coincidences and a sort of uh, ego too. Ego one was a personal ego, ego two was a sort of world soul. Mm. Because a uh, hundred years ago you were not allowed to speak about spirit without including the church. And that is exactly what has happened now. So now, after uh, f uh, 70 years of Soviet empire, they were allowed to make consciousness research beyond the research, uh, the churches and faiths. Uh, and so a number of um, new models has mm. evolved. Mm. Um, So a book like this one, Source Field Investigations, include consciousness research beyond Western and Eastern religions. That is David Wilcock. Oh, yes, yes. That's a very interesting one. Um, this is a very interesting thing also. The only planet of choice. Uh, the author here calls herself Transceiver. She has received spiritual messages in trance mm -hmm. and writing it down. And that explains, for instance, um, uh, when um, Jehovah came down to the northern Tibet, and that was the first colonization by the Jewish people. Yeah. And um, then, uh, so Jehovah has gave a precedence to his own people mm. already 32,000 years ago. How many? 32,000 years ago. That was the first colonization of this planet. Not the first, but the one. Um, and uh, that was... Um, how do you... How can you believe this? Well, it's just a theory. This is uh, what philosophizing is about. That is only one sort of theory. I would say. How can you know? I like this uh, thing about really sort of things that you know, that you can test. Mm -hmm. Real sort of, you know, real substantial things, not, not just theories. This is a lady. So when a um, flying saucer crashed, in America in 1947. Um, there was one surviving pilot and engineer and uh, um, she was a secretary and nurse and she had a talent for telepathic communication with this pilot. Mm. And she was um, entrusted to write uh, it down, all the interview with this pilot. Yeah. And um, then 
uh, high staff uh, personnel killed the pilot because he was a threat to the American security, national security. But uh, she was still in contact with the spirit. Oh. And um, she had written all this document and was able to keep it, but she was uh, threatened that she would lose her life if she told anyone. Yeah. So she kept the secret in 40, for 40 years until she decided to take her own life. And then he sent the manuscript to a publisher that gave this book. And this is something that explains the created world in another way than Darwin or the science or the church is doing. Mm. And to me, that is good alternative. And what is the created world in, uh, in some sentences? How does it look? How many lifetimes would you like me to expand on? <laughs> is it that hard to describe? In between each lifetime, as ISB is sent back again to begin all over, as though the new life was the only life they had ever lived. They begin anew in pain, in misery and mystery. This is about reincarnation also, yeah? Mm -hmm. As I have uh, understood, it is this, uh, this planet is like a training camp for the soul to become more and more divine. That's right. That's right. When you find your divinity within and don't distract yourself with any religion in between and have the promise the, like I got it at age 30, you will get the idea you need. Yeah, exactly. It's all about... This is school. That's why I can read all these different things. Yeah. So don't worry about troubles. They are just tests. <laughs> okay, and... Uh, <clears throat> So if you grasp this theory of yours about time, you said it very well in, in uh, Swedish. Can you try to repeat it in English, this model of yours? I find it quite fascinating. This, uh, this little tsunami there. How did you see it? This is a scenario, isn't it? This tsunami. It's a, it's a sort of spiral. Yeah. That um, the, there is no one sensor to measure time. Because you have to make all 12 senses. And now I say 12 senses. You have six senses to the physical world and six senses to the spiritual world. Um, if you hear frequencies to one side, the, the physical world, you can hear music to the spiritual side. You see a message, a spiritual message through the music. And this is the difference between art and science. Because natural science is so directed to the outer world. Exactly. They do not even understand that there exists a world of ideas completely different. A philosopher walks the um, borders without any trouble. He loves to do it. Hmm. Yeah. 
especially when a uh, person comes and asks for it because then it suddenly it, it is a meaning with my life mm. because somebody is saying that there is a value in my talking absolutely and yeah. when you mention this i just think about all these senses you said and they are not just there you have to train them they have yes, to sort of exactly. be exercised yes and there are six senses to this side smell taste uh, uh, feel you feel the body um, vision hearing and then you have a, a six one and that is uh, balance because there are a circle uh, the ver vertigo uh, no hold it. the inner ear three circles uh, with sensors yeah. seeing the angular movements that's right and, and uh, and um, the spiritual correspondence to that is the sense of I am. You have a sort of center in the world, in your conscious. You are the black hole of the universe. <laughs> yes, exactly. Because that is the gift, double-edged gift to humankind. Yeah. Uh, as it said here, this is the only pl uh, planet of, of choice. choice. The creator is testing of letting humankind have a free will because the supreme creator is so curious what will they those do with it can they find out something that i have not created myself i want to know That's is right. the creation bigger than myself yeah and this perspective you can't have without uh, what um, Moses got as an answer when he saw the light around the bush. It is burning, but it's not consumed. It was a lot uh, intense light, super light mm. from the spirit. Okay. And he, he asked, who, who is it that give me this task of taking the people out of the uh, prison uh, uh, slavery who are you who should i refer to i am that i am the total presence in time and space over the entire uh, it was the creative spark super light mm. and in my um, perspectives as an engineer I say to have full control of the development of uh, a civilization or a cosmos the creator must access must have an access to a communication link that is not limited by the speed of light he must have a super light with immediate contact with all of the creation of course and this cannot be understood by scientists because they say the speed of light is the limit not to the creator of course not because if he uh, rejects the idea of a physical body 
he does not obey to the physical laws mm. of time and physics and chemistry and all that. And I was thinking about that these all of these senses, what were what were the senses of the soul? Um, twelve. What are what are the soul senses? The other six. Um, well, poetry can be one language, for instance. Linguistic. Uh, so. Is it soul? So. Uh, soul is the thing that links the spiritual world to the physical world. Mm. The ver you mean the verbal aspect of the soul is a sense, yeah? Because we can... Because, the uh, souls can understand each other without words, I would think. Now, that, now you are into something very feminine. <laughs> because a mother can see that uh, her child is lying mm. because of the body language. <laughs> but that is physical again. That's physical, yes, exactly. But if we speak about the senses of the soul that you mentioned... If you... Uh, and that's the... If you have uh, an... Uh, la um, a physical language is DNA, for instance, that is, and that is, uh, that is a language, life yeah, as a right. language. That's right, the life code. But it doesn't say what is the purpose of life. It is to be lived and express itself through life, through uh, incarnation after another. And... Um, so I say, um, if you watch the television, you can hear what they say, but um, if you also see a poetry in what is said, you have a spiritual dimension to the language. And that, experience, yeah. And that's exactly where we have um, Plato. Because Socrates was arguing, putting on a verbal fight with the powerful men. But um, uh, Plato, as a poet, could put it down on paper so that uh, he wasn't uh, killed. <laughs> he could express it in such a way that, that it, it had a beautiful, a poetic beauty. Yeah, and that creates peace. Yes. That's right. Uh, so, uh, therefore, even if it was a debate that irritated the power-hungry Athenians, Yeah. Uh, uh, eventually they killed or um, made him make suicide in front of them because he did it with free will and that's the beautiful and he is uh, he is uh, remembered for that he decided that it is more to my life than my body here now and then he realized that uh, he would, his arguments would be remembered. Better. <laughs> yes. That's that, a trick. That, that's that, a very that's, cruel trick. That, that's the uh, stage where I have said, I don't have to impress my um, temporary anymore. I write my things for the future. And suddenly when I feel it's ripe, they will be published and I can leave it to the next generation to debate <laughs> for generations. Yeah. Okay, so what I was thinking about these senses is that uh, 
re returning to this book uh, about the profitable how do you call it in English in um, English profitable municipal kidnapping yeah uh, this is about in, children and uh, the, the title has also profitable municipal kidnapping in Sweden and this is this is about children yes being kidnapped uh, so I was thinking about these senses that children have to develop well to evolve into a yes into a and this person personality and all these senses that little kids have to develop and this is so important that they are with loving people around them really give them all and the depths and all the dimensions of their knowledge and their predecessor knowledge and uh, the air from previous generations and if they get sort of kidnapped into some non-loving environments put in just for somebody who are there sort of just thriving on the money given for their schooling, then those dimensions are lost and they can never ever evolve into full personality. This is this is unbelievable level of crime. Uh, that's exactly that's it. very and hard to trace uh, and, and put mm -hmm. down because you never will see the this person who would have been there if it was in and that's good why I'm relations. Ha having a I just prepared a paper for a peace conference in Bali next year, 2014, which I um, um, which I um, express the importance of mother and mother's love is the key to peace because the family is a place for experimentation of all the soul faculties and it is something that has to and who is it's the traditional mother who leaves everything of her personal ambitions in the outer world for one talk, so that's the most important thing to help this little creature yeah. develop. But but even farther, you know how it is. It's not enough with mother. You have to really have. And that's another thing. But uh, the very important part, and what we have lack in Sweden now, because of this, is that it is always the mother who. Who is blamed for not taking care of uh, the child in the right way and that's a big lie because we take care of the children because we uh, earn money for it yeah yeah and we cannot say that and it is also the previous generations i have noticed that it is quite um devastating that the yes. old people in sweden they sit in old people's houses and they don't they don't raise the next generation that's, it's that's, a total loss of, mm, of um, historical knowledge it's unbelievable and, and that's why it was very important um, when i met a north american I indian grace growing medicine eagle born and raised with a uh, chief from the Tsalagi nation, Cherokee, as it's said in the Western terms, and a mother that was a Amish. So it was a sort of mixture there. And um, but she was trained in the uh, Indian trade, North American Indian trade, and she said. The family... Tribe, you mean, yeah? Tribe, uh, yes. Um, the important thing is in a Indian tribe, 
uh, is the circle. The most sacred inner circle are the children. Outside is a circle of grandfathers and grandmothers who have the experience to educate the children and not the strength to go out hunting or um, food making and so on. So the tribe was uh, healthy if the children was the center core, grandparents the outer next circle, and then you had the parents, and then you had the warriors helping to defend for enemies animals and the uh, nature of uh, and uh, humans, other tribes. And then outside that you had the shaman who was guaranteed the blessing from the spiritual, the great spirit. Mm. And that's what they call it, great, the great spirit. And all this, and then she's mentioned uh, from the Hopi Indian prophecy. She was uh, lecturing about that. He said, um, some thousand years ago, all the North American tribes uh, were very um, what do you call it? Uh, Krigiska. Uh, they want uh, fighting, uh, fight, uh, great fighters. But the Hopi Indians were more peaceful than others. Therefore, they got a prophecy, a peace prophecy, to um, manage. And that includes, as um, uh, this grow, Grace Growing Medicine Eagle explained it to me, that when a new child is born, the mothers and grandmothers, the elder women, gathering to recognize what is the background of this child. And then they saw it seven generations back. Because using that background, then you uh, used it for a prediction or what they call it, a scenario for seven generations forward. And can you think about anything in our society looking seven generations back and seven generations forward? Yeah, that's what we have. That's to do. another culture. Absolutely. Yeah. That uh, science would call nonsense, trolley. But she has said that in honesty to me. And as a philosopher, I take in it and said, ah, that is the problem. We are not keeping families together. Yeah. Because it is the concern of generation shifts mm. that is a base for war or peace. Yeah. Yeah. If you have a responsibility over generation and not just for yourself. I would say if there is love in the family, yes, right. nobody wants to make war. That's right. And that's why they need uh, really to... And it is totally a misconception, the Swedish system, yeah. that a sort of a gang of indoctrinated uh, so socionome, socio sociologi, upplärda människor, um, uh, um. But I would like to say that I have, I wouldn't even, this is a, a perverted sociology. Yes, yes. 
that's how would I call it. Because uh, when you separate men and women into different blocks, as this has been done by aggressive feminist um, quarter truth, uh, because if you only talk about the rights of women, then you're talking quarter truth. Because there are the rights of men and there are power areas of women, the matriarchy. And if you are hiding it, if you're not analyzing the <clears throat> power um, viola violations that women do in their power areas, then you are destroying even more the social structures. Mm. Because you allow women without understanding themselves and their deeds on the others to become tyrants mm -hmm. and uh, unfortunately this has this is the case in Sweden now and these uh, separated groups mm -hmm. social groups uh, that have been sexually separated by their race uh, sex by their sex and gender they of course have very hard to be harmonious. That's how you create armies. You, you, you separate sexes. Then there is less possibility to, to have real love. Mm -hmm. And um, then you can make this violence. You need separated sexes. And that is very well known in a deep uh, science of these issues. But unfortunately... Science is not our um, everyday life anymore. We have been uh, brought into dark ages. But uh, the, I would like to say that in Sweden we now <coughs> have this. We have gone from socialism to, femi to feminist dictatorship, mm -hmm. and uh, we have we we see we see uh, women have taken over banks. Look! Look at the banks. <laughs> Even banks, they run them. Uh, they they run all institutions. They they run all almost anything in police even and everywhere, you know. And uh, mainly, I would I would be able even to say that uh, <clears throat> it was a very deliberate strategy to bring the women out of the family. To, oh, yes. to trick them into this oh, idea yes. of you oh, yes. will be more independent and powerful if you go working and uh, <clears throat> liberate yourself and from that, the family <clears throat> chores. <throat> and of course there is tr some truth to it as indeed women need to get out of the prisons of the house and housing and family. But it has turned into... a uh, exaggeration and nobody should be working these enormous hour, hours it's 40 hours a week how long have people been working this it's for 100 years they haven't minimized that amount of hours although the communication in mo in mobiles and effectiveness of our systems has risen unbelievably our communication it goes like that i call you I, I look on the internet, I get all information that communication systems are so effective that we should be needing to work one hour a week if you compare yes, it to previous exactly, times. Exactly. But but all this effectiveness is being canalized into these corporations mm. that just suck people dry. Yes, 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 yes. And Indeed. this is what we're talking about. We're talking about this corporation. This is a corporation that is having a profit plan. How they are profiting on human mm -hmm. children. And uh, we have it. On breaking the families. Exactly. Uh, uh, and we have so many previous experience of, of family forming and everything can be now um, well summarized with this new media um, and um, one can say 
You mean internet, yeah? Internet, yeah, yes. And uh, blogs and uh, all. Uh, and there is no experience that is the right experience. But everything can give an experience and that can be used for something new that we are creating in the future. And this is the um, new age, I shall say, the positive world. Uh, creativity will be the next thing. You are creating your life using um, a new set of combination making you unique as long as you are as you say have the fabric of love saying do to others what they expect and allow you to do mm. yeah and uh, um, not go f further than that because everyone having a unique profile in her lifestyle and so on provides a sort of reference point what does that type of life lead to problems uh, benefits and it, uh, and that's uh, so. I will have to contradict you on this, because as you as you said that um, all experience is good. I will I will try to say that it would be better if we had anyway teaching where we knew which experience is better than other. Because we shouldn't be doing mistakes that our predecessors have done so many times over and over again. That's exactly, yes. And that's why I'm creating this um, modeling system, how we can model good systems, yeah? And see the consequences mm. before we do these mistakes. Mm. And with these computer systems now, we can do it easily. Although it, there will be, of course, mistakes in the computer systems. But anyway, it's better than nothing. And we will be doing much lesser mistakes if we model our society. Because right now we have a situation when nobody has chosen this. No, that's right. None. Um, even the king, even the Rockefeller, nobody has chosen this day. Today's system. And the politicians who, who sit there and pretend that they know what they're doing, nobody has chosen this. And that is something we have to change. Mm -hmm. We need a referendum mm -hmm. yes. on, the, on the system of society so that when we go to vote, we can vote a system that we want. Instead of voting for some people, we, know, we mm. have no idea, no faith is that idea what they do. Yes. And yes. they have no contract with us and we can't impact anything. And uh, this is also about this. We never chose this. This is imposed on us, violently. Mm, yes, violently, yes. And uh, it, is this, it is very sad also about these people who sit there mm. and profit on this system. It, it, is, it is grim to their souls. Imagine how they will be doing in the exam room of the God. They'll be back, <laughs> they'll be back to, to hell and, and start all over again. <laughs> Where is their white conscience, their, their peace of soul and growth and um, satisfaction to see better systems evolve? That's why I still hope that we can have a dialogue with them and convince them to, to see this new society modeling project where they will be, they will be given freedom from their dark tasks. Can we go over to Svenska? Okay, then we could round about now, yeah? Mm -hmm. Because um, just, yeah. just mm -hmm. we'll finish the English version. Okay. 
So what would you say about, in general, about your experience in this subject? You have been doing this subject, a uh, law. It's a awful, How is it in, in, in It's an awful negative thing to make it a book. The English book is uh, meant for a creative reader that we don't have here in Sweden anymore because we uh, we have a... Is it that bad? Yes. Oh, God. The creative people have a, an international background, a cu culture background that's not Swedish. And that's why they can be creative in Sweden. Uh, uh, and that's why I'm... Um, the English version of that book is completely different. It has, it's not a translation of the text there. At all, it's a new version. It is uh, based on four letters to the e, um, International Criminal Court in Haag, which uh, I said I have... Um, so, using my command of English, command of language um, in a word that can be using the word spirit in positive terms and lit in Swedish is that something church stop that yeah they have destroyed, they have destroyed it's a the term destroyed. it's a stopper yeah. but uh, therefore uh, the English book is asking for a help from European minds of getting out of this trap mm. that the Swedes have put themselves. Mm. The, the, go, the putting socialism to being totally atheist, materialist. Feminist dictatorship. Yeah. Anyway, uh, we are here, the European people, <laughs> we will unite yes. and save each other. Uh, can you please tell your uh, web page how the listeners can find you on the internet? Mm. Your web page is peace.org, yeah? Uh, no, I can write it down, but... Um... It's just simple peace, yeah? P-E-A-C-E -E dot org. No, uh, um, www.peace.se. Oh, that's right, not org, sorry. It's .se. And if you have a slash blog with one G, then you come to the valuable uh, pieces of uh, uh, foresight for a sort of peaceful new world order. Mm, mm. And some literature into that. So... Um, and um, that's why I had some. Uh, that's this you can give to anyone how to find this book. Yeah, we can put it in here so the readers can see. And this is a telephone number that you put just Swedish code before and take away the zero before the eight. Yes. So. Uh, it is, has the philosopher's blog and it has peace philosopher's blog. And these are two things. So the Swedish blog is to the Swedish mentality of blaming yourself. The English has a sort of creative edge to everything. What can we learn from the mistakes of the uh, Dumme Schweden? Dear beloved Swedes, so, we are wonderful people and we will su yes, succeed. Because I, I think so, um, I hope to have a Peace, Spirituality and the Future conference in Stockholm. 
But just now, Sweden is involved in a civil war. So, uh, can of you kidnapping can, of kidnapping the children? So, and my friend from the families and placing yes, them yes, yes. into institutions. And they are not even daring to speak open about it. You, uh, there are twenty-eight thousand. Swedes under LVU rule. Every year, as I understand, they no, take No, no. They are constantly renewed. And the HVB hem and the system has 28,000 people. In Germany, which is a larger company, a larger country, they have 38,500. Oh, it's much larger country. And that makes uh, Sweden have a problem six times. Six that times in bigger, the, bigger. Per capita. Per capita. Yeah. And the difference is that is in Sweden it is totally silenced. In Germany they have a heated debate. It's something wrong about this. Yeah. That cannot be expressed in Swedish society because we have SVT Pravda. The Swedish television is such a big force in forming the minds of the people. But it is quite privately owned by very few <laughs> pa families, so uh, it's, it's not Swedish really. Uh, but it's another subject, huh? Anyway, uh, you wanted to fi finalize this English session, so and I obey your will. No. I, uh, that will bring us into... Swedish, uh, Swedish uh, well, yeah. reality. Yeah. Thanks so much, Uwe. Thanks so much for your generous time that you have been studying. Just ha happy. Okay, bye.